And just to pick up on that last section, uh, there are details about Bill Weir's uh, new book uh, on the We Don't Have Time website. That's we don't have time. Org. And talking about uh, we don't have time .org, um, we also want to go over to uh, the founder and CEO of uh, We Don't Have Time, that's Ingmar Renshog. Um, yeah, and um, but what is We Don't Have Time really? What is this organization that we're working for? What is this media solutions operation that we have? What does it do apart from organizing climate broadcasts like the one we're doing right now here uh, from Bonn in uh, Germany? So let's now see if we have Ingmar Renzhog with us, uh, the founder and CEO of uh, We Don't Have Time in Stockholm. Ingmar, hi. Hi, Nick. Great. I'm going to leave the floor to you so you can inform the, the global public that we're more than just a broadcaster. Yes, we are. Uh, and I would like to start with uh, our mission. Um, our mission is to democratize knowledge about climate solutions in order to mobilize people around all the solutions and create a fossil free and prosperous future. We have the solution, we need more people to embrace them. And part of what we do is exactly what you have been doing to yesterday and today, uh, broadcasting, opening up UN meetings, climate meetings, where we are making sure that people all around the world can see what's going on. And where we also bring in a lot of leaders working on solutions to those meetings through the magic of Zoom and other technologies. And I'm very glad to say that we actually are currently almost at 10 million viewers that have tuned in yesterday or today during our broadcast from this UN meeting. Uh, so that's one example of what we do. We do many other things as a climate media platform that I will soon tell you about. But um, I would like to start by telling the story of how, how all this actually started. Um, and it was seven years ago. Uh, I was watching CNN, uh, as we saw here just quite earlier, when Donald Trump won the US election. And on that moment, it became so clear to me that our world leaders will not solve the climate crisis for us. Uh, so I wanted to contribute, and I know that communication can be a tool of change. And I've been working with communication my whole career, before I founded We Not Time, I was running a financial communication firm in the Nordics. We were actually quite profitable and uh, we had almost all financial players active in the Nordic market as our clients helping them with communication. So I wanted to use everything I learned about how to communicate. But instead of communicating finance, I wanted to contribute and communicating about climate action. So I sold my company and founded We Don't Have Time together with uh, my co-founder David Olson and now a, a team all over the world working with this mission. Um, so that was how this story began seven years ago. And uh, so many things have happened on, in this time period. And uh, we, all, we are still having this debate about Donald Trump. Uh, are we moving? I mean, things are not moving fast enough. Many things are going in the wrong direction. But I think we, we need to start to actually look at the progress we also have. And actually, we have made a lot of progress during those seven years. I mean, not talking only about we know time, but the world. So let's start with how the world looked like seven years ago. We were heading towards five degrees of warming, uh, end of century. And five degrees, that means end of human civilization in my children's lifetime. Five degrees end of century, that's where we were heading at seven years from now. And this has changed. So now we're actually at 2.7 degrees. That means billions of people will suffer millions will die and we will have so much harder life to live if we're able to live but it's a big difference compared to this 
five degrees extinction scenario. So what we need to do now is just to speed up this progress. We need to get it down to 1.5 degree end of century. And we have the solution for that. We have seen this during those two days. We have the solutions. We were probably going to need to overshoot the 1.5 degree target. But end of century, there is absolutely possible to reach and limit the warming to 1.5 degree. And it's also possible to build a much better world, a brighter future, a better future for us all. And this is what we on the time is all about. We are communicating that we can do it, that we have the solutions. We just need to speed up. And in seven years, what we have done is that we have created the world's largest media platform for climate action. We are amplifying all the action that are happening out there. And we're doing it together with our users of 100,000 climate professionals and leaders. They are looking for the solutions. They are working on the solutions. They are sharing those solutions in our network. And we're also working with more than 350 corporate partners that are in need of communicating what they do and help them to actually thrive and to get more green businesses. And we reach out because we can't just talk with those that are already doing things and already concerned. So we are partnering up and using social media. Uh, and we have a social media reach today of almost 200 million per month. And what we have built is that we have built our own tech platform supporting this infrastructure. So what you can do on We Don't Have Time platform is that you can look up companies, search for them, also leaders, and see what are they doing? Are they doing something great for climate? Probably other people are giving them climate love. Are they doing something bad? People are giving them climate warning. We also have the facts, the numbers. Are they reporting emission data? Are they making progress? Are they on track on delivering that climate target of net zero 2040 or whatever it can be? Uh, and is it a financial company? Are they investing in the fossil fuel extraction or are they investing in the solutions? All this information is what you can see on We Don't Have Time. And you can also participate. So if you want to communicate to a leader, uh, you can send them climate love and climate warnings and they are answering. And we are getting responses from everything from presidents to global corporate leaders like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, etc. They are responding to, to feedback, positive and negative, on our platform that leads to change. So if you haven't downloaded Video Time app yet, do that and go to Google Play or, or Apple app. Uh, Apple store. And in order to, to reach out with what is happening in this space, we have built our own streaming service. It's a little bit like Netflix, but for climate solutions, where you can find all content we have broadcasted today and previous years, and also our partners, interesting conference about climate conversation, climate solutions, etc. And we have a monthly average 10 million viewers. We also have had so many interesting speakers. Uh, we have a speaker database with over 7,500 speakers. And one of them, as you see here, were actually Joe Biden that we had on our show last year. So who are tuning in to our broadcast? Who is watching? And who is using the We Don't Have Time platform? It's uh, very interesting people, I will say. Uh, it's users from over 180 countries. It's very global, very spread out. And it's the doers, those that are acting and working with different things. So we are reaching policymakers, people working in governments uh, and different organizations creating the policies for the future. We have a lot of journalists, uh, like people like you saw just before me from CNN and other news outlets that are very interested to see what's going on in the climate solution space. We have climate influencers, business leaders, investors, academic scientists, and a lot of engaged consumers that are, wants to do things differently, that wants to have a future. They're all coming together on our platform. And what we do together with them is that we 
are creating and amplifying all other climate action that are happening out there. If you have a small wave of something positive, our platform can amplify that and create a ripple effect and a lot of waves moving in the right direction. And we're doing it together with our corporate partners that are paying for it. So it's free to use our platform, but if you want to use, communicate as a company with, with what you do, you, we help you with it. As you have seen here during this day, we had had everything from Google, Microsoft, Ikea on our shows. They have talked about their own climate initiatives. And we're also working with smaller companies that have everything from plastic-free plastic to fossil-free cement or whatever it can be. And we're also working very closely together with a lot of non-profit organizations that are pushing for things, that are communicating what they do and what others need to do in order for the whole green transition to succeed. So there is a business in communicating climate action. And that is what we believe in. We believe that doing good for the climate, doing good for the future should also be the most profitable business idea you can do. So, so far, we have had a fantastic uh, journey ourselves. We had a lot of recognition. So in 2022, we were the most innovative environment startup. And 2023, Deloitte put us on the list of the fastest growing tech companies here in Sweden. And I mean, we have those gig guidance as Spotify, Klarna. They have all been fastest growing tech companies in Sweden. So we are in, in, in quite good company. Earlier this year, Financial Times put us on their list of the fastest growing companies in Europe. In fact, we ranked number four in the media category. And just last week, Deloitte put us on another list, the fastest growing technology companies in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So we have had a lot of growth, but we are not that big company. I mean, we are a big communication platform, but business-wise, we had a total operating income last year of 1.5 million euro. Uh, we're not profitable yet. We had expenses of 3.6 million euro. So our goal now going forward is to fill that gap and becoming profitable. Uh, to date, we have fundraised about 10 million euro. Uh, we had a company valuation of 50 million euro last round last year in a quite difficult market. And we have had an annual growth rate of 70%. And that is what we're actually standing out among other startups. So what are we doing with our growth? We are growing our influence. And by being a media, a global media platform, we are doing a lot of influence. We are not creating the waves, we are amplifying them. And some examples where we're very proud to have played a role with our communication platform uh, could be exemplified by some COP meetings. At COP24 in Katowice, we invited Greta Thunberg or she actually asked us if we could fix so that she could get on stage at that COP meeting. And that changed the narrative around the climate crisis forever. Uh, what Greta has done for the world is actually educate that we are in a crisis. And that was a pivotal moment happening at, in Katowice. At COP25, we created, with, with, together with the Nordic governments, we created the very first digital no-fly hub so that people could speak at the COP conference in Madrid without even travel there, flying there. Uh, this was before Corona and everything, and we used the digital technology that we are using today. Uh, and it, I mean, someone needs to do it first, right? At COP26, we worked very closely together with UNDP, pushing for ending fossil fuel subsidies. Uh, and for the very first time, the outcome of that meeting where that fossil fuel subsidies were mentioned in the agreement. You need to celebrate the small things, but that was actually a big thing, that for the first time fossil fuel subsidies were even mentioned in the, in the COP agreement. At COP27, not so many people know about this because you always know what happened, not what's, what are not happening. But in Chamesheik, there was actually, in the first week of the negotiations, it was very close that the, uh, the countries gathering there we're, we're thinking of uh, cancelling or, or abandon the 1.5 degree as a target. 
So together with we mean business and a lot of big businesses, we gathered and pushed for, no, don't do that. This is important for the business community. You can't abandon the target because if we had abandoned the target, all the investment in, in reaching the target will be in vain. So that didn't happen. And we're very proud that we, we supported this wave of businesses advocating for protecting the target. And at COP28, we gathered all the stakeholders pushing for a phase out. It was everything from NGOs like the Non-Fossil Fuel Proliferation Treaty to big businesses, science organizations, and also some governments that all pushed for phasing out fossil fuel. The outcome was not a phase out, but it was a transition away. And I think that's a very, 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 very good thing because if, you, if all the leaders in the world have agreed to transition away from fossil fuel, it becomes harder and harder for the finance industry to invest in fossil fuel expansion. And that is another example of some influence we have done quite recently. Um, early this year, we started to publish fossil fuel data together with the leading NGO, Urgewald. So we have fossil fuel data about financial communication, financial institutes like pension asset managers and banks and, and those players. So if you look them up on our platform, you see what they do, what other people think of them, but you also see if they're investing still in fossil fuel. Uh, so in this example, you see here, uh, the largest state-owned pension fund, AP7, they have made a lot of investment in fossil fuel, three billion last year billion dollar and one of the that investment were actually in Saudi Aramco oil uh, and Saudi Aramco oil is a state-owned Saudi Arabia company that is very hard to influence uh, that were resisting this COP28 agreement so what we did it was a lot of conversation around this topic on the Wheel on Time platform so we invited the head of ESG uh, at AP7 to uh, conversation to a dialogue uh, on, on our streaming service uh, at We Don't Have Time. And we broadcasted that to many, many viewers in our network. Uh, and we had a discussion around, is it even possible to be an active owner in those oil companies? Uh, they argued that, it, that they kind of had an influence, but we didn't really get any examples. And uh, kind of the discussion we had, or isn't it better to move this money from the problem into the solutions, etc. It's a very interesting, honest discussion about this topic. We need to talk with those we don't agree with in order to actually change things and move things forward. What happened after this dialogue that we broadcasted on We Don't Have Time, where that four other news outlets published this internationally. So it became a debate in the sustainable financial community, community that is it, is it really possible to have an influence over a state-controlled oil company that is doing the wrong thing? And what happened last week, a couple of months after we had done that interview, the state fund sold their holdings in Saudi Aramco and some other oil companies, and they are tell, talking about that they're going to sell more oil. So this is a golden example where a dialogue can lead to change. And of course, it was not just only because of us, but we amplified the wave and we made people to listen to the facts. So that is where we are today. And uh, if everything looks so bright, we have the influence, we have the growth, what is our challenge? And in fact, we have a big challenge. And it's not just us. us. It's uh, almost all the companies we are working with, they are now entering the next phase of the green transition, where it's not only about talking and about what did they do, the ambition and, and growing the solutions. Uh, it's not enough. Now you need to show that you can do it in a profitable way, because in the end, businesses need to make profit right. And it's a challenge market for, for doing that. Um, 
I mean, right now we have the high inflation and high interest rates. That makes it very, very difficult to attract uh, funds to, to build your company uh, in order to scale it as fast as possible. Uh, I mean, my time last year, for instance, I, I think I used more than 90% of my time as a CEO with a time talking to investors instead of talking with clients and developing the company. That is really frustrating. And we managed to raise two and a half million, but I would rather have raised that money from our client base instead. So that's one challenge. The other challenge is the political climate right now. Uh, it's moving in the wrong direction. It's a lot of uncertainty. So many companies are in a little bit standby mode. We don't know what's happening. We, all, we need to wait and see what's going on in the US election, what's happening with the European Union, et cetera, et cetera. And that is increasing the risk to, to invest and do sustainable business. And the third challenge is that the market for all those amazing products, like you saw here, fossil-free plastic, fossil-free cement, fossil-free steel, uh, fossil-free aviation fuel, I mean, it's so many fossil-free and also uh, you know, environmental positive uh, solutions out there. They need to find their market. Uh, yeah. And uh, in order to do that, we need to educate the market and we need to communicate the, the advantages of doing things in a fossil-free way. Uh, so that's where we don't have time come in. That's the challenge we have and our clients having. And our plan is actually by helping our clients to succeed with their green sales, we are becoming profitable ourselves. So we are now refocusing, we don't have time. Growth is not our number one goal anymore. Now our number one target is to reach profitability. And we're doing that quite classic. We are reducing cost and increasing margins. Uh, so that is what we, what we are doing right now. And the business model is that we are helping our clients to communicate what they do. We are providing content marketing for purpose-driven companies. That is our business model, that we are now developing more formats to support all those solutions providers to become profitable. And this is a huge market that are growing a lot. The content marketing market it's a global market of over 400 billion US dollars, and it's an annual growth rate of 17%. So we're tapping into this market, and we believe that what we can help our clients with will be essential in order to get the green transition to succeed with the next phase. And the next phase is profitability, not just for us, but for everyone active in the sustainable business community. And we want to do this with one more, one more solution. Uh, and it's not really content marketing, it's more content education. Uh, we see a great need for, in order to really find the market, you need to educate end consumer, you need to educate the supply chain and everyone involved. And when they realize that doing things in a new way it's not more expensive. It's maybe just a little bit more expensive in the beginning, but at the long run, it will be more profitable. But you need to do things differently. You need to think differently. So we have a lot of clients already that have those solutions, but they need to educate their key target group. So we are going to help them to do that by repurposing a lot of the broadcasts we have already made and new ones into online education. And we're going to provide everyone that are receiving that are participating and, and watching those online participation, online education with a certificate so that they can show that they are constantly educated about the solutions. And that's very interesting because here in Europe, we have a new regulation called CSRD. And part of that is that you need to show that you have the competences about sustainability. And by showing that you're uh, educated about solutions on wind on a time, you fulfill that legal requirement. Uh, so this is something we see both as a big business opportunity, but also doing a lot of climate action uh, for uh, everyone that needs to 
become even better and deliver on their climate ambition and climate target. So what is my ask? What do we need? And I think you maybe have figured it out because the theme of this UN meeting broadcast have been money, 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 money. That is what we need. And in fact, everyone that wants to change the world needs money to do it. And another person that is also on a mission to change the world, Donald Trump. A couple of weeks ago, he invited his network. It looks a little bit different compared to our network. He invited all the oil executives in the United States to his residence in Mar-a-Lago to a fancy dinner, fundraising dinner. And he had an ask. In order for him to be re-elected, he needed a lot of campaign money. He asked for one billion US dollar from the oil industry in the United States and he promised to win the election with that money. And as once he's the new president of the United States, he will pay back by canceling all the climate legislation, like we heard here with the previous speaker from CNN. I mean, one billion to destroy the future. That was his ask and be rich on the way doing it. But as you saw, I mean, if we end up end of century, our, parents, our children will not, I mean, what should they do with the money in a destroyed world? So what's the difference between his ask and my ask? My ask is that we only need 1.5 million euro, not 1 billion, 1.5 million euro. That's the capital we don't have time need to do the shift to focus on profitability, reach that within one year. And as soon as we have reached profitability, we will continue to scale as a profitable, sustainable, global climate communication platform. And what we are going to do with the money is to work on having a future for us all. And don't make people like Donald Trump have the power to destroy it. That is what we promise to do as a return of investment more than doing a good investment. So we need you. We need everyone, in fact. Uh, if you're watching this, if you like what we do, you see the value of what we do, help us become part, become an investor. If you're working today as one of our partners, you can also invest in us. We have a lot of rich partners, a lot of big companies that can do that. And we have a lot of users that can contribute and join our community of investors that believes that by saving the world and making sure that we can do businesses tomorrow is a very good business in itself. We are not a non-profit. We are a for-profit for climate company. And I believe that we can return your investment in many ways. And what you see on this slide is some of the existing shareholders we have that have built this company up until now. And now we ask you to join us all to take the next step, to take We Know Time to profitability. And the way you can do that is that you can go to wedonthetime.org slash invest and you can register your interest and we will get back to you. But hurry up because we don't have time to wait. So, Ingmar, thank you very much indeed. I had some questions for you, but I think your presentation has actually answered them all. And uh, we're right on time for the next segment, if that's okay with you. I just would say uh, for everyone out there, if you believe in climate action, We Don't Have Time is a powerful force to, to help that happen. And you can go to we don't have time.org slash invest and make sure that we're still up and running for the next uh, 10 years. Um, so thanks very much indeed, Ingmar. It was a great presentation. Thank okay. you, Nick. Bye.